The Senate Armed Services Committee would fund the U.S. Army's entire list of unfunded requirements, also called a wish list, consisting of things the service wanted but couldn't pay for within the limitations of its top-line fiscal 2022 budget request, according to a July 22 summary of the committee's markup of the FY22 defense policy bill. The Army's wish list asked for $5.5 billion in additional money that would help reduce risk to operational readiness and protect critical modernization efforts. At the bottom of a list of authorizations for the Army, the committee in its summary of the markup stated, authorizes all other unfunded requirements as requested by the Chief of Staff of the Army. The unfunded requirements list is a document the military services sent to Congress each year following the release of the defense budget request to tell lawmakers about where they could use more funding in a perfect world. The lists are usually provided at the request of congressional defense committees. The manufacturer of a troubled armored fighting vehicle used by the British Army has admitted that it was already aware of technical problems as early as 2010. The military invested £3.5 billion, $4.8 billion, in nearly 600 fighting vehicles from Defense Corporation General Dynamics, but has only received 26 to date. Trials of the Ajax fighting vehicles had to be suspended after eight soldiers suffered injuries due to vibration while driving the vehicles. More than 20 troopers who use the equipment also saw treatment because of hearing issues. During Tuesday's Defense Committee hearing in the House of Commons, two senior officials from General Dynamics said they also encountered vibrations and noise issues when they used the Ajax vehicles more than a decade ago. Hearing through the scope of his F-88 rifle, leading seaman William Lead and his team in HMAS Brisbane entered a compartment to clear the space of potential threats. This was part of the training for the Quick Response Force and Boarding Party, duties most commonly undertaken by boatswain's mates who specialize in weapons handling. Leading seaman Lead and his team are on exercise Talisman Sabre 21, TS-21, the largest bilateral exercise between Australia and the United States, hosted every two years off the coast of Queensland. Noting that TS-21 is a warfighting exercise, personnel in Brisbane wanted to prepare for all situations that may arise at sea. As part of their training, Brisbane's boatswain's mates conducted high-intensity serials in darkness, including compartment entries, room clearances and close combat behaviors, using the F-88 870p shotgun and Browning Mark II pistol. Leading seaman Leet said the serials prepared his team to conduct boarding operations in potential high-risk environments and to help safeguard the ship in domestic and foreign ports. French aerospace and defense firm Thales has been awarded a contract to provide new avionics equipment for Rafale fighters to enhance their operational effectiveness. The company will supply the cutting-edge French combat aircraft with digital multifunction displays and Scorpion helmet-mounted side and display systems. Thales pointed out that aircrews have to analyze more data and less time during missions in complex environments with the current Rafale system. But with the new side and display systems, crews will be able to respond to various threats more quickly and with greater agility. The helmet-mounted display symbology brings together information from the aircraft's onboard sensors to help pilots perform their missions even in the most challenging situations, the company said in a press release, adding that the new systems can enhance tactical situational awareness of pilots. Sometime in the next 24 months, light infantry soldiers could be asked to help test the utility of unmanned ground vehicles, UGV. The Directorate of Land Requirements, DLR, intends to buy and try up to five autonomous vehicles under a minor capital project and will provide one to each of the Army's three light infantry battalions and two to the light engineer regiments. We want to give troops that typically carry the biggest loads on foot a chance to play around with these vehicles, see how they'd use them, and tell us how well they might work and be integrated within real missions, said Major Tony Ross, who leads the Light Infantry Enhancement Project. Experimenting with UGVs is a side effort to better understand how to best fit a rapidly emerging technology into operations. In addition to turning loose the light infantry to push the vehicles to their limits under a variety of operational conditions, Ross plans to conduct more specific and formal trials of the five vehicles, with Defence Research and Development Canada DRDC, and the Canadian Army Trials and Evaluation Unit at CFB Gagetown. Part of any buy and try would also include two years of integrated logistic support to gauge the level of maintenance required by units to keep the vehicles rolling.